Today we will draft, model, and cut custom inserts to turn extra Nintendo DS cases into hard shell replacement cases for Game Boy games. This is an introductory project to learn 2D CAD. The basic principles here are taking a physical object, measuring it, and sketching said object into a computer-aided drafting program. In my early years, I started with Inkscape because it's simply free and capable, a free 2D drawing program that you can download now and follow along. This is an engineering approach to design and fabrication. Before we start drawing in CAD, we need a plan or a rough sketch of what we want to achieve. I want to make something like this. If you're having trouble visualizing where to start, try photographing what you're trying to draw from a flat perspective. Include a ruler so you can import the photo to the correct size. Drawing in CAD to scale it is key. We can trace over this photograph to get a clear plan of our project. There are some variances and guesses we might have to take due to issues with top-down photographic perspective. The geometry of this cardboard insert is simple, a few rectangles of various sizes. We will fill in the dimensions soon. The interior DS case, and these are the more recent versions, are without the Game Boy Advance cart holder. We want an insert that is slightly undersized of this interior profile. My general approach to draw anything is to simplify the object by reducing its features to basic shapes. There are four rectangles here. Using calipers, we can measure these distances. At this point, we don't need to worry about drawing to scale. That's what CAD is for. Calipers are not necessary here. Any ruler with a clean markings will suffice too. Since the insert has to fit inside something, I'm going to round down the exterior measurements. For the cutout of the Game Boy cart, I might round up because I want a little bit looser fit to ensure that the Game Boy actually fits inside the cutout. So I have a new document open in Inkscape, and for reference, I'm using version 0.92.4. First thing I want to do is clear my drawing space so I'm not confused by lines that are present that I'm not using. And that's going to File, Document Properties, and I'll move this to its on screen. This is where you can change your units to default to inches if you're working in inches, which I am in this case. And I'm also going to get rid of this page border because I don't need it present right now when I'm drawing. And I'll close that out. I'm going to close my toolbars. I'll show you where those come from. So to help, to help with visualizing where we need to go, I'm going to do a convenience factor, but this you would actually have this dimension drawing you know on your desk and you're referencing it as you look but i'm going to import a fully dimensioned drawing of what we're trying to make just so you can see where i'm going side by side as i draw it so this would be your rough sketch that you you know drew in pencil on drafting paper after you've made all your measurements and this is where we want to go so we're going to try and create this but this is just a picture in this case I'm going to get rid of some things that are just a little bit noisy that I don't need to look at, like the coordinate lines of this. And you can do this if you want. This is an advanced tooltip for Inkscape. I'm just going to draw a box around what I want to look at. And I'm going to go back to the regular selector. As long as that box is selected, I'll select my image in this case. I'm going to go to Object, Clip, and Set. And that's the clip point of what to get rid of. So now that I have this clear visualization of what we're trying to draw. Let's try and draw it. So this shape can be broken down into essentially the outer rectangle, the two inner ones, and this interior cutout, so four rectangles. So that's what I'm going to draw first, and I don't care what size they are right now. We'll do that soon. I'm going to use the rectangle tool, and right now I want to change to just black lines. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, and that changes my stroke line to black. And fill, which is fill the inner object, is set to none, so it'll just be empty or white. So I'll draw my big exterior cutout, the small interior cutout for the game, and I'll just plop two rectangles in the relative location for these little notches that are supposed to be cut. Now we're going to scale everything so these sizes match what we're trying to go. So I'll select my object and the toolbar in the up top shows the characteristics of this object that's selected. So we want the width to be 4.98 inches and the height to be 4.78. I'll just type those in on my numpad and press return. Next we'll do this small interior cutout. This should be 2.56 tall and 2.25 wide. And as I click out or hit return, those changes are made. 
Next, we're going to do this small little cutout, which is 0.13 wide and 0.11 tall. So I'll just zoom in a little bit and make those changes, 0 0.13 and 0 0.11. So this should closely match this. Now, my lines are actually kind of thick here. So if I want to reduce the thickness of those lines, I'll show you how to do that. So we go to Object, Fill and Stroke, because that's what they are. These are stroke lines. So we go to Stroke. This is the color. It's black right now. And this is the stroke style or thickness. So if we're working in inches, uh, 20 thou is pretty thick. 10 thou is a, is a little bit closer to what we're going at. And as, as I change those, the object also scales down too. So it got a little bit too small. So I'll just correct that. 0.13 and 0.11. So that's a little bit closer to what I want. So again, I'll go over and place this close to where it should be. And since I've I don't need to redo these dimensions, I'm just going to select my old one, control copy or edit copy, and then paste a new one. And the paste in this program pastes wherever your mouse cursor is. Okay, so I have my all my objects here, and they're all to the correct scale. Again, if you want to change your stroke lines to match essentially like the curve of the tool you're using, I can do that again. Going to inches, and we'll say 0 0.10 or 10 thousandths of an inch, make all those changes. And again, uh, your object, now that the lines are thinner, it might not match to the exact size you want. So I'm just going to go in and make sure these measurements are the same by selecting the object and typing in the absolute dimensions that I want. So 2.25 wide, 2.56. And you can see things got smaller by essentially the reduction of stroke width that I put in. OK. Unfortunately, with Inkscape, we can't actually like type in this dimension between this line and this line because this is more of a vector uh, illustration program, not really a CAD for designing mechanical engineering program. But there's ways to do that. So the black lines are essentially what I'm keeping. And now I'm going to change my stroke to a different color, whatever color you want. Well, now I'm going to select a different rectangle. I'm going to make new ones. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select Fuchsia. So now I have purple or fuchsia rectangles. I'm going to draw one rectangle. This is going to be my helping rectangle. And it's going to be essentially this distance and my reference point to do it. So this width is 0 0.30. And just to make sure everything's uniform, I'll just make it also a perfect square. So now I'm going to put this square right here. And to make sure I do that, I want objects to snap or you know, essentially lock to each other. And I do that by going over to this where snap nodes are on. And I want to enable essentially all these. But the ones I'm really using are snap to corners or cusps in this case. So when I drag this corner down to this corner, when they get close to each other, they'll snap. And that lets me know I'm right on top of that. Then I'll move this other corner over there. And that looks good. So now that I have that selection, you can you know repeat this process, copy the square down, or I'll show you some more tricks. So I'm going to essentially copy these. I'm going to group them together. I'm going to control paste, copy them. I'll paste them. And one thing I can do is I'll flip them on the horizontal. I'll zoom out, and I'll just put that other version right there. So these are grouped together, which means when I select on either one, both will be highlighted. I can't edit individual ones until I ungroup them. So I can right click and do ungroup. And I'll do the same thing here, ungroup. And now I'm going to delete our measurement square. We don't need that. To actually make this notch, uh, we're going to subtract vector lines from each other. And the way I do that is the order you select them usually matters in most programs. This program, it, it, can, it can get confused. But in this case, I'm going to select my object that I want to subtract from. And I'm going to select the object that I want to use to subtract. I'm going to go to Path. I'm going to do Difference. This is Subtract or Control plus the minus key. And that subtracts that vector from there. And I'll do the same thing down here holding the shift key to select different objects, going to path, 
and difference. So now I've made that cut out. Lastly, there's this radius line that's 0 0.05. I can't enter that in in my vector in this program. It's not an engineering program like this drawing was made in. But I can get pretty close by what I'm going to do is put these objects on top of each other. I'm going to turn the snap off because this square and this radius aren't going to like each other. And I'm going to select the rectangle tool, and I still have a rectangle selected in this case. And this little circle here, if I click and hold, this is what makes the radius on a rectangle part. So I'll just kind of get close to what I think is appropriate. Go back. And if I want, I can do snap. And I'll do snap to midpoint only. And I'm going to just check that line. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to take that part and move it back over to what I'm trying to work with. And next, we're going to I'll essentially center this square with this square, both vertically and horizontally. And the way we do that is use the Object and Align Distribution tool. And this is where you the order of your selection matters if you have relative to first selected. So the thing I want to align to should be selected first, the outer rectangle. I'll hold down Shift and select the inner rectangle and align from vertical and horizontal. And now this square is perfectly is aligned halfway on the vertical axis and horizontal axis. Lastly, I'll group these objects together since I want to maintain that association. And I'll do group. And that's it. That's the part that I've got drawn. We can lay it on top of each other. And it should be pretty darn close with some variances in line thickness. OK, so if you want to make this a template to cut out, uh, we can delete the our, our visual drawing. And we go back to Files and Document Properties. I'll turn on my page border again and move this on that page. And if you want landscape, you could do that too. And we could add some test, text. And if you save this as PDF in this case, your size and ratios are preserved. So if you print this out, that means you have a perfect paper template that you can cut out with scissors and then lay this on cardboard, trace it, cut that out. Uh, but this gives you a perfect one-to-one -to, -one to essentially take this, cut it out, and make sure it fits to the actual object you're trying to do. And this might have some back and forth, but this is where you go to essentially verify your prototype is good. And then from there, we can actually start cutting these out with a laser cutter. To complete this project, we do have to cut out the molded area that holds the DS cartridge. I would advise putting some thick cardstock between the clear jacket and the back of the case. This should protect the clear outer sleeve from a protruding blade such you cut too far. When cutting, be sure to do this carefully. Visit the coverproject.net to grab user created inserts sized for DS cases. Print these out on legal size paper and cut them out. Well, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Be sure to practice and try drawing other objects to become proficient. Try modifying this drawing for Game Gear games. You can make just about any insert and create custom cases for any peripheral. With these basics, you should be able to make slip covers for custom jobs as well. Our next project will be mixing 2D drafting with a 3D twist. Thanks for watching.